let's try to do another product rule here. We're going to take the integral from 2 to 3 of x to the fourth times x to the fifth minus 30 to the third. Definitely would be a product rule and a chain rule for a derivative. And so when it looks like that, we know we're going to use u sub for the antiderivative. So u is going to be the factor that's being manipulated for this one. It's x to the fifth minus 30. And that's our u here. What's happening to it is it's being cubed, which is totally fine because we know the antiderivative is going to be 1 over 4 u to the 4. But we have to do a lot of side work before we can get there. So we're going to take the derivative of u to be 5x to the 4th. Derivative of 30 is just 0. So my whole du is just 5x to the 4th dx. And now I need to switch those x values of x of my bounds to be u values for my bounds. So my old bounds were from 2 to 3. So I need to put those into what I have solved here. U is going to be whatever x is raised to the fifth minus 30. So this first one, I'm going to do 2 to the fifth minus 30, which is going to give me 2 for my new lower bound. 2 to the fifth is 32 minus 30 is just 2. So it's kind of weird that we plugged it in and we got the same number out. My lower bound in terms of x was 2, and it's also 2 in terms of u. That typically doesn't happen, but there's no rule saying that it could ever happen. Let's try it with 3. 3 to the 5th minus 30. My old upper bound was 3. I plug it in here to figure out what u is when x is 3, and I get 213. Something completely different. Um, typically, that's what happens is when you plug in and switch your bounds to use their different values from x's, but for this case, the lower bound is still going to be 2 when we do our substitution, and the upper bound is 213. Those are my u values. We know that it's u cubed, and now I just have to make sure I have a perfect du so that I'm allowed to take the integral. So for a perfect du, I would need a 5, an x to the fourth, and a dx. I have an x to the fourth and a dx, but I'm missing a five. So I have one x to the fourth dx. What I have is one fifth of my perfect du. The other way of doing it is just putting the five in there. I want it to be five x to the fourth dx. Okay, let's throw a five in there. That way we have our perfect du, but to balance it out, we'll put a one fifth outside. Whichever way you like to do it is fine. Now we are ready to integrate. I'm gonna keep the one fifth. And I'm going to add 1, so I'm going to get 1 over 4, u to the 4. And instead of plus k, I'm going to use an evaluation bar from 2 to 213. So what I have really out front, 1 fifth times 1 fourth, 1 times 1 is 1, over 5 times 4 is 20. I could write 120, 1 over 20, times 213 to the fourth, minus 1 over 20, times 2 to the 4th, but how I usually enter it is I just keep that factor out front, plug in my upper bound, minus my lower bound. And most calculators even require this fraction to be in parentheses. So there's a bunch of ways to type this in and still follow that fundamental theorem of calculus. Uh, this is how I like to enter it in. As long as you're doing your upper bound minus your lower bound, you can enter it in however you like. So many, a huge amount of area under this curve, um, and that's probably because we have an x to the fifth on the inside, and then it's being raised to the third in that original function, and it's multiplied by x to the fourth. It's just a really high up function. So I'm getting one zero, two nine one seven three zero seven point three. So we can put our commas in here, and we get one hundred two million nine hundred seventeen thousand three hundred seven point three as our net area under that curve, because that's what integrals measure is net area or net change.